Okay, thank you for being here for our presentation. Here, I'd like to start off by introducing the team. My name is Tijun Chen. The team also has another member, Zidong Xu. We are both from VRI Octo, office of the CTO. In Octo, we are belong to our one group, that's ETG, or the one's technology group. Our group focuses on impactful near-term co-innovation through a better alignment and collaboration with our IT product team and even partner and customer. Uh, basically, uh, we are trying to incorporate emerging technology solutions. Uh, back here, today we're going to talk about this Empower Heterogeneous Edge AI Acceleration with Kubernetes. It's about accelerating edge AI on Kubernetes. Let's go through today's agenda. At first, I will talk some problem areas while running AI at the edge. And then we'll talk about how to boost AI at the edge over Kubernetes with our solution. We also have a demo. In the end, what's next? Okay, talking about edge AI. I think most people know machine learning AI and also heard edge computing we are facilitate data processing at or near the source of data generation. But what's Edge AI? Edge AI means our processing data connected or created on the device at the edge of our networking, but using artificial intelligence of the result. But simply put, Edge AI is a combination of edge computing and artificial intelligence. According to some reports, Edge AI is growing rapidly. Actually, I believe you can find many of the key things around your life. However, there are many challenges existing for a good implementation of edge AI architecture. But usually, machine learning tasks require powerful AI hardware. But many edge devices are resource constrained, and they have limited install space or limited power supply. So it's harder to enable machine learning on these edge devices. Variety of edge AI accelerators have been introduced, but they are from different vendors. So the architectures are heterogeneous. But most upstream machine learning frameworks, such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, and so on, do not support them directly. You have to set up sort of SDK or 2K to use them. Or maybe somewhere you can find some machine learning frameworks can support some edge AI accelerator, but they are released and maintained by the hardware vendor. And it's also difficult to get the best performance on this edge AI accelerator because you should realize there are many technologies that potentially can be optimized to accelerate machine learning on this edge accelerator. In the meantime, you know, AI and machine learning workloads are the most popular workload on Kubernetes. Now, actually, the edge user also expects Kubernetes will be the platform of choice for running AI and machine learning workloads at the edge. How can we unlock real the edge AI? In our solution, we intend to meet those challenges by building such end-to-end -end machine learning inference service on Kubernetes at the edge. Uh, mostly, it includes two uh, key parts. One is boost the machine learning inference with our backend acceleration mechanism. The other is to enable CID-based accelerator for seven or no. Okay, um, let's first talk about our transparent backend acceleration. Now here, our goal is to build an acceleration server system. The system is backend and automated, so this can work automatically. The system also has a unified server framework, so you can easily integrate that to any platform. We also enabled a lot of accelerant technology enabled on many edge AI accelerators. Here, one thing it was mentioning is uh, there's no any code change to your application written with those upstream machine learning frameworks. How can we make this happen? Let's move on. Uh, here's the architecture. Uh, you know, we already integrated this to Kubernetes, but here I leave this out in order to explain that easily. Uh, overall, as you see here, we have defined multiple logic nodes. Each node has different role and name. Uh, basically, we first deploy system agent on your node. Uh, this agent can help connect some necessary information, including your edge AI accelerate on your platform and your CPU type and the 
We also want to know if your CPU can support some special CPU instruction like EVX or EVX2. Or, you know, in some cases, uh, we are using this feature to accelerate machine learning inputs. And the manager of uh, deploy runtime serving with a uh, default backend acceleration. But the users can reconfigure that to any um, acceleration technology uh, we are supported on this platform through controller. Then manager inject into product to uh, make machine learning framework on this node. Once the users call any AI code on this native machine learning framework, on the one hand, our interpoler can help get some data, uh, including model or model info, and uh, our auto compiler can compile this pre trained model to a uh, one given intermediate reputation uh, specifically to this uh, backend acceleration, acceleration technology, and even cache and store that. On the other hand, uh, interpoler can intercept that API of doing machine learning inference called by this native machine learning framework. Instead, we use our backend acceleration technology to do real machine learning inference with that pre-compiled intermediate reputation, and then get that result and output back to our native machine learning framework. Uh, that's it. Hey, I'd like to elaborate a bit of our runtime interposer. Essentially, it's targeted to our uh, API mapping. Uh, it's more like a mapping between machine learning upstream frameworks to our backend acceleration technology. Example is on TensorFlow. Uh, one typical Python code often calls some API like load model or load weights to generate the graph and call another API predict to a machine learning inference. Here, we use some Python chips to uh, redirect that load model to our customized model predicted to our customized predict to uh, work this out. We also support C++ in this case, we um, pre-compile our handler into a shared object library. At the runtime, uh, we hijack the machine learning framework process to uh, load that model and bridge that API to our handler to uh, make this out. In summary of this part, now we can support a several upstream machine learning frameworks, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, and close to a TensorFlow 7 system. There are a few backend acceleration technologies available in our system, including TVM, Intel OpenVINO, uh, NVIDIA TensorRT. We also enable those popular at AI accelerators, Intel Movidia VPU, Google Edge GPU, NVIDIA Edge GPU, we also leverage some technologies like remote CUDA to connect remote GPU to any edge device to do a machine learning inference. In some cases, uh, we use CPU to accelerate machine learning inference. Okay, uh, how to enable this transparent backend acceleration to our Kubernetes iPad to a system? Thanks, Tijun. Hi everyone, my name is Zitong and I'm part of the project team from VMware Greater China Octo department. As Tia Jun mentioned earlier in the solution section, I will be providing more details about solutions for deploying end-to-end -end machine learning workflows based on Kubernetes. When doing machine learning, customers want to have a consistent Kubernetes platform to deploy and manage the machine learning workflow and make use of AI hardware accelerators on the edge for great performance. Here, we mainly combine several popular technologies. The first one is node feature discovery. As name implies, it is used to detect hardware features on each node in the Kubernetes cluster and use node labels to advertise these features. We use it to do detection of PCI devices and USB devices on the node. The second one is device plugin, which is a framework from Kubernetes that you can use to advertise system hardware resources to the Kubernetes. We will use them to register and publish hardware resources on the nodes to the Kubernetes for scheduler to schedule. 
Currently, Kubernetes already provided some official implementation examples for AMD GPU, NVIDIA GPU, Intel GPU, VPU, FPGA, and etc. OpenVINO runtime plugins also enables inference of deep learning models on some supported VPU GPU devices, such as Intel Neural Compute Stick, uh, Intel Movidius VPUS. <clears throat> we should note that Intel Kubernetes device plugins just support many new VPU cards and does not support the old device like NCS1. Thus, we did an investigation on deploying um, OpenVINO VPU plugins. <clears throat> then we also use some Kubernetes features like node selector, which is the simplest recommended way of node selection constraints, which also is a field of part spec that can make this part work on a specific node. Finally, Kubernetes scheduler will assign our machine learning parts to work on the targeted node, uh, according to the registered information as mentioned before. By integrating the above popular technologies, we design an end-to-end -end machine learning framework solution, which greatly reduced the complexity of environment configurations for users uh, when using heterogeneous hardware accelerators and improves the in efficiency. At the same time, users just to need to use the basic Kubernetes command lines to manage edge accelerators with the help of backend acceleration technologies, such as uh, Apache TVM, which is an open source machine learning compiler framework for CPUs, GPUs, and machine learning accelerators. We also exploit Intel OpenVINO Torquate or NVIDIA TensorRT as backend acceleration technologies. By adopting them, customers can boost their machine learning tasks um, in the clusters without any native code change. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide and take a look at the overall architecture. Here, assume customers have a management cluster and they have several hosts equipped with heterogeneous AI accelerators. They can easily manage and take advantage of them by adding them to Kubernetes clusters. As you see, we have two worker nodes, <clears throat> where the left one represents a general st structure where the right one illustrate a um, specific example for NVIDIA GPU. In general process, firstly, we adopt node feature discovery and make it works as a demo site on every node. And we know node feature discovery lists PCI USB IDs in the node labels to represent the device edge devices. Here we can see in the right side example, the node label is a number series, which is hard for users to distinguish device names immediately. Thus, we have simplified this step by adding a mapping function, which can automatically translate and uh, translate the discovered device IDs into human readable classes, vendors, and the device names. In the example, the digital series has been automatically translated to the specific NVIDIA GPU cards, as you can see in the left side, uh, which is GeForce GT710. Next, by adding the specific device labels in the node label field, the customers can efficiently deploy device plugins demon site only on the node with targeted devices. Upon the startup, 
the device plugins will report and register uh, hardware resources to the device plugin manager in Kubernetes. And then starts the gRPC server for Kubernetes to access. Next, Kubernetes will establish the listen and watch link to get the device ID and provide a health check. In the end, Kubernetes will update the device information to the node status and wait for further scheduling. I will be providing a clear device plugin precise in the upcoming demo part. After successfully deploying device plugin daemon sites, we can start to create machine learning pods. Here, we can provide ready to build Docker files, which include everything you need to run machine learning tasks with the backend acceleration interposers. For example, uh, Apache TVM, Intel OpenVINO, and NVIDIA Tensor RT. And the necessary environment for interposing mechanism, hardware configurations, and et cetera. It will create an image on the worker node for users to run their native inference codes with different edge devices in the container. Overall, this solution not only provides customers with small edge device selections, but also greatly shortens the user's learning time for Wasator uh, backend interposers. Now let's head to the demonstration part. Firstly, check nodes in Kubernetes cluster. Here we can see we already deployed the node feature discovery demon site on each node. And we have four worker nodes. We can check the node labels by using this Kubernetes command line. We have heterogeneous hardware backends with human readable device names in our environment. For example, NVIDIA GPU, Intel CPU, Intel Mirad VPU, Google Edge TPU, Intel GPU, and AMD GPU. Then we can check GPU capacity on each node. Here we can see NVIDIA GPU has not been registered. Now checking the node with AMD GPU. The AMD GPU has not been registered. Can deploy device plugin daemon site. Here we add the node selector with the node label. The AMD device labels to the node selector field. Then create NVIDIA GPU device plugin daemon site. And create AMD GPU device plugin daemon site. Demon sites are successfully deployed on the proper node. Then we can check the GPU capacity on each node again. Here we can see NVIDIA GPU has been registered. And the AMD GPU has been registered too. Then we can start deploying inference pods. In the demonstration, we will use TVM interpose as an example. Then we can create inference pod on NVIDIA GPU and on AMD GPU. 
and on an Intel CPU. Then we can view the pod status. Here, the inference parts are assigned to the corresponding nodes. Then we can run TVM Interpose inference demo on NVIDIA GPU node. This is customer local inference code for machine learning inference. Then we can enable the TVM Interpose backend server. In another terminal, we can run inference demo for Resonate 50 V1 model. Here we can see we triggered cache mechanism. We can run TVM Interpose inference demo on AMD GPU node. Enable the backend compiler. See the target is Arcom. In another terminal, we can run inference demo for Resonate 50 V1 model. <clears throat> okay, as time consideration, here we just show the TVM example. But if you're interested in other backend interposers such as OpenVINO, please feel free to contact us. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> this slide shows the performance corresponding to the demo. We have compared the inference time between the TVM interposer enabled and the TVM interposer disabled for different modules, such as Resonate 50, Resonate 101, MobileNate V1 trained by CIFAR data site and uh, ImagineNate data site, MobileNate V2 uh, on different hardware accelerators, such as uh, NVIDIA GPU and uh, AMD GPU. In our testing, the TVM interpose performs as well as TVM and generally accelerated the machine learning inference time. <clears throat> Here we can see in the left hand side for NVIDIA, the best case is the MobileNet V1 module, where with our backend acceleration mechanism, the inference is eight times faster. <clears throat> For AMD GPU, the best case is also the MobileNet V1 model, which has been accelerated 19 times. And we believe this will even perform better on newer accelerator cards. Okay, that's it for my presentation part. And I'd like to hand over to Tiajun again. Thank you. Well, thanks, Azudan. Okay, the last part, what's our next? Uh, we want to support more machine learning frameworks and more uh, machine learning source system in production. We also need to enable it to those edge network of the next version. Um, one day uh, we will make this as an open source. Uh, okay, uh, let's all please feel free um, to reach out to us if you have any question and feedback. Thank you.